Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So women's autonomy is something that the left has hijacked, shall we say. While women's lib in the mid 20th century was undeniably a left wing cause, conservatives have since then been somewhat shunted out of the realm of female empowerment. Now, while conservative women, in my experience and from my observation, are all too willing to lend their voices to the public discussion of women's issues, they tend to be held down by the regressive left and the feminists who populate that movement. They are accused of capitulating to the patriarchy and also of possessing something called internalized misogyny. They're also portrayed as gender traitors, the colloquial term for which I believe is boy suck, according to Australian uber feminist Clementine Ford. Now that can be a very, very difficult narrative to cut through, especially for young women. But as a conservative woman looking at the state of modern leftism, it baffles me as to why any woman of any age would want anything to do with it. When you take it blow by blow, it is very evident that being left wing nowadays is not only holding women back, but making them miserable. As such, I feel it is my civic duty to issue a warning to young women to avoid the trap of leftism and identity politics and turn to your conservative sisters for guidance. So here is why young women should be conservative. But before I tell you why, pretty please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I am so, so close to reaching 100,000 subscribers. I really, really want it to happen by the end of this month. So if you like my videos and you watch them but haven't subscribed yet, I'd love you to hit that subscribe button right now. Okay, thank you. It seems that everywhere you look, leftists and feminists are screaming about how women should be free to do, say, and be whatever they want. And I agree, of course they should. But it is ironic that while leftists live and die by this mantra, what they propagate actually encourages the opposite. See, leftism isn't about freedom or choice of any of those things that feminists promised women. It's about being beholden to an overreaching body of bureaucrats who think they can make every little decision for you while restricting their behavior and speech of individuals to conform with what only a small minority of people decide is socially acceptable. Take women's income. Women work damn hard for the money they earn and deserve to, you know, keep it. However, when you get lefties in power, you can kiss your pay packet goodbye. While seducing women with promises of free everything, when you get down to it, leftism subjects women to the whims of an almost all-powerful state, which leeches money from citizens to pay for, well, goodness knows what, thus restricting women's financial autonomy. And while, yes, I am aware that some tax is necessary for public services, it is not as much as the lefty powers that be would have you think. Patting women on the head and insisting that a government body of strangers can spend her money better than she can is not very feminist. I mean, that's just like the rules of feminism. Modern leftists also have a rather nasty habit of telling women what jobs they should and shouldn't do. For example, huge amounts of negative attention are given to the fact that there are less women in professions like medicine, STEM and politics. There is, however, no celebration of the fact that women are overrepresented in childcare, teaching, social work, and nursing. The achievements of those women are in fact ignored, while housewives are constantly shamed for daring to prioritize family over career. The fact that the act of bearing and raising children to be good human beings while caring for and maintaining a functional, happy household is now labeled unpaid labor by leftists is a very sorry reflection on their ideology. Women can make life choices for themselves and don't need a bunch of tacky cultural Marxists telling them what they should and shouldn't do. Conservatives are, on average, happier than your average leftist. A 2016 YouGov survey of 19,000 people across Europe found that in all but one of the countries surveyed, the further to the right people were, the more satisfied they were with their lives. Now, this is true the world over. One big reason for this is that conservatives tend to have more meaning in their lives. Now, the most obvious reason for this is that conservatives are generally more religious than the left, and religious people have a great deal of meaning and purpose in their lives for obvious reasons. 
But even the more secular conservatives are happier because conservatives believe in personal autonomy. They feel that they control their own destinies rather than being subject to uncontrollable societal forces. People on the right operate under the assumption that if you work hard enough and you remain optimistic, you will get wherever you want to go in life. This awareness, shall we say, of equality of opportunity and perceiving people as individuals rather than members of a group keeps hope burning in the hearts of conservatives and releases them from the pressures of conformity. Conservatives are also much more likely to accept the world as it is, rather than desperately chasing some sort of socialist utopia that doesn't exist. And while contrary to popular belief, conservatives actually do empathize with the needy, hence the fact that conservatives are more likely to give to charity. We don't run around looking for injustice everywhere because we know that, compared to the vast, vast majority of the world, people in Western countries have it pretty good. Leftists, on the other hand, are comparatively miserable. Aside from the fact that they live in a self-made prism where imaginary prejudice is everywhere, they lack the sense of optimism and purpose that comes with a conservative worldview. Militant atheism, which can go hand in hand with leftism, ultimately ushers in a nihilistic worldview where everything is, well, pointless, so we might as well destroy ourselves in hedonistic pursuits because there is no higher power to judge us and nothing matters anyway. We're all alone, Carrie! That is no way to live. I would also like to add that, unlike leftists, conservatives have the maturity, shall we say, to separate the political from the personal. Because right-wingers are actually not interested in having a lot of government, we don't turn to politicians for moral lessons, and we tend to care less when our candidates lose. Which is why you very, very rarely see right-wingers behaving like this. Donald J. Trump is now President of the United States. So sorry <laughs> to my world. We will face There's so much we potential options, but um, we will get the job done. for beauty and for devastation. Years, we gather, In this one steps. moment, it's just almost incomprehensible the that they can exist right now. <laughs> Now, as for leftism and women, well, it is undeniable that leftism makes women miserable. That is not even speculation. There is plenty of evidence to suggest that since the 1970s, despite women's lives objectively improving in terms of equality and the options available to them, their happiness has been progressively declining. Now, it is obvious that this decline in happiness coincides with the rise of feminism. Now, not that I'm saying that the women's lib aspect of feminism is bad. On the contrary, it is great. I would not be here talking to you were it not for women's lib. However, the pressure placed on everyday women by radicals and cultural Marxists within the feminist movement is certainly taking its toll. Insisting that women are able to have a killer career, an amazing social life, three perfectly raised kids, an incredible husband and a perfect marriage, plus a beautiful home, and all at the same time, which is not possible for anyone, man or woman, was never going to do women's happiness any good, let us be real. Neither is insisting that all women are subject to an invisible web of systemic intersectional oppression, where characteristics that they cannot control, such as, well, gender, race, sexuality, etc. are always going to trip them up, regardless of how hard they work. This attitude does not stand up when placed against the real world as we know, but it is a very pervasive narrative and causes women, especially young women, a whole lot of anxiety. This anxiety is even infecting teenagers. Now, I found this ridiculous survey of women and girls between the ages of 10 and 25 who were asked about their perceptions of equality in Australian society. It found, among other things, that between 96 and 98% of girls surveys said boys and girls received unequal treatment. A large number of girls felt it would be easier to get ahead if they were treated the same way as boys are, 91% to be precise. By the time girls reach early adulthood, only 57% agree they have every opportunity opportunity to become a leader compared to 75% of the girls aged 10 to 14, 40% of girls think gender is the biggest barrier to their chances of becoming a leader, and above all else, girls just want to be treated as equals. When asked what change they would want to see in the world, 50% of girls aged 10 to 14 in this survey said unprompted gender equality, including equal pay. Okay. 
As the left likes to say, let's unpack this. How on earth in modern Australian society can girls as young as 10 with zero experience of the hardships of adulthood think that somehow women aren't treated equally to men and that their gender is going to hold them back? There is no way these girls have the life experience to make these calls. Most of them are still in school. But therein lies the rub. The reason girls as young as 10 think they are in an equality bind is because that's what they're taught. The education system is rank with the stench of leftism and not just your standard brew. I'm talking regressive leftist Marxist dogma cooked up in the humanities department of some university somewhere and handed down to unwitting schoolgirls with the sole purpose of making them feel crappy about themselves. Children do not have any sense of political concepts unless someone is feeding it to them. And in this case, it is their teachers, obviously, perhaps their trendy lefty Gen Y parents, and whatever baseless feminist trash Zuckerberg and co decide they're allowed to see on social media. As a result, these young girls are entering the world on a self-esteem backpedal sometimes before they've even finished learning their times tables. Nobody is telling these girls the truth. They're not told the difference between equality of opportunity and equality of outcome. They are not told that different treatment doesn't inherently equal inequality because men and women are different. And as for the gender pay gap, well, I'm going to defer to Shu on this one. The wage gap is simply the average earnings of men and women working full time. It does not count for different job positions, hours worked, or different jobs. It has nothing to do with the same job. It has nothing to do with discrimination. These poor girls are fed left-wing rubbish which is based only on half the story and half the data and it is evidently making them really unhappy. I mean, how on earth can a 10-year-old girl in a Western country believe that the world is always going to be stacked against her because she's a girl? Leftism presents young women with a false reality of the oppressor versus the oppressed, which ultimately makes them feel hopeless and miserable. Conservatives, however, will not have a bar of that defeatism, let me tell ya, which is a much, much nicer environment to exist in. Contrary to popular stereotype, conservatives have better sex than leftists. The same YouGov study found that the further to the right people lent, the happier they were with their life between the sheets. This is at least in part because right-wingers are more inclined to have intercourse with people they care about, whether they're in a steady relationship or married. They are not about that hangover from the leftist sexual revolution where hedonism trumps traditionalism and literally everything is about sex. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby! Left-wing feminism, which champions promiscuity, is only going to get women screwed over, figuratively and literally. Since conservatives have had less sexual partners on average, and of course less jading experiences of sex, and since they tend to save it for relationships, of course their sex lives are going to be better and their relationships stronger. So why would a woman want to immerse herself in a world that glorifies superficial sexual encounters as somehow empowering, when she could have a happy relationship and a bang in sex life if she just avoids the lefty train? Conservatives encourage aspiration, competition, and the freedom to shine on your own individual merits. They don't define people as members of a collective and decide their worth based on such superfluous characteristics as race, gender, and sexuality. If you're a young woman and you hang around conservatives for long enough, you will feel like you're part of a world where everyone starts on a level playing field and that with hard work and perseverance and optimism, everyone can chase their own dreams and desires. Much better than feeling like you're part of some non-existent gender war where no matter how hard you try, your gender is always going to hold you back, right? If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my Subscribestar link and other ways you can support me.